Hey, Negative X, who's clearly sitting next to me off screen. You want to play an unspecified sport? I love playing non specific sports. I am quite the sportser. Great. Now, which one should we play? We could try lacrosse. I lack all the materials needed to play that sport. What about frisbee golf? Frolf, I believe it's called. Frolf sounds like it should be the name of a milkshake. Also, I lost my frisbee, so pass. Fine then. What about tennis? A sport we can all get behind. Now I can get behind that idea. The only problem is the weather outside looks a bit unpredictable. So I guess we have to stay inside now. Well, then why don't we just watch some TV shows about tennis? Is there a type of TV show that will give us ample tennis-themed options? How about anime? There's always anime episodes about tennis. And also ping pong. Wait, individual episodes about tennis? Why not just an anime series about tennis? There are plenty out there. I don't have the attention span for an entire series. We should just watch episodes from random series, and then maybe rank them on which ones are our favorites. Great. While I would not exactly call it a trope of anime, I've seen some that have a random one-off sports-themed episode to resolve a conflict, with tennis being one of the top recurring sports in non-tennis-themed anime. At the very least, a tennis match is a significant part of the episode, if not filling the whole episode. And as Negative X implied, there will be one ping pong themed episode on this list, since the game was based off tennis even though we're aware of the differences between them. The main rule on this list is no anime that are primarily themed around tennis. We'll keep descriptions of the anime plots themselves brief, since we don't want to keep you here all day, but we still can't expect you to know every anime on this list. Now, is there anyone else around to watch with us for variety's sake? I said, is there anyone- I know about some animes, but I don't know anything about tennis. Hey everyone, it's my other co-host who's generally coherent, Judgment Meter. Mmm, Judgment Meter is coherent 95% of the time. Well, now with that intro out of the way, here are our top 10 tennis, or ping pong, themed episodes of non-tennis anime. Number 10 is Plastic Nissan. At an episode length of only 2 minutes 32 seconds, it has surprisingly little tennis action in it. Barely qualifying it for this list. The entire episode feels like it's building up to something that just never happens. This series has no real overall plot. It's a compendium of randomness, so there's not much to expect out of this episode if you want a legitimate analysis from us. In short, there are some well-timed visual gags, and I like it when the main character breaks a tennis racket on her knee out of frustration. As we said, it's only two and a half minutes long, so you're not really wasting your time by watching it. Yeah, you should watch it. Or don't. You can save that two and a half minutes and do something useful with it. Like play an actual short round of tennis, or at least drive to the tennis court. Or sit in traffic. Or, you know, something similar. Way to just give the downside of my idea. Who likes to sit in traffic? Number 9, Puripara Episode 4. This anime is so bright and colorful. It's like I'm eating pure sugar with my eyeballs just looking at it. And I'm eating rainbows and bubbles and sparkly doodads! So these main characters are pop star magical girls. I guess it's kind of like the anime version of Gem and the Holograms. Does that mean Gem is really a superhero? Magical girl? Middle school tennis player Aiko wants the main character Lala to give her a special performance to help her with her tennis match after Aiko so kindly saved Lala from impending danger. While Lala misses the first match, she manages to make it at the last second when Aiko is about to lose her next match, 40 Love, against the team captain whose name is Love Toshitome, as in the tennis term Love. Oh boy. Anyway, the episode ends with Aiko having an epic comeback, all thanks to Lala's performance, which is apparently the equivalent to Gatorade. We barely get to see the tennis comeback, though, because we have to watch the stock footage of Lala and her friends singing, so who really wanted to see a tennis match anyway? Number 8 is Death Note. Now, Death Note is a phenomenal anime, and in this episode, the two main characters, L and Kira, end up facing off with both Mines and Braun on a tennis court. Now I'm not a betting man, but if I was, who should I put my money on in this match? 
Well, one of them is like the former champion of tennis, and the other guy, well, he likes to eat candy and stack things. So are you just giving away that it's going to be Kira? You'd be surprised, considering the fact that the one guy does nothing but eat pastries. He plays a pretty mean game of tennis. Does he play tennis by stacking things? I'm sorry, I'm the only one here who's never seen Death Note. No, he hits the ball. It was all a battle of minds. It, it, it's cool. You'll see it. You should watch Death Note and, uh, and that, or maybe you shouldn't. How to Suggest a Series by Negative X. Number 7, Princess 9, Episode 3. I'm pretty sure the show is about baseball. Why is it on this list? Well, I'm glad you asked. This is a series about a girls' high school baseball team put together by a chairwoman of an all-girls high school trying to prove its legitimacy despite all parties against them. Protagonist and star pitcher Yo Hayakawa meets the star tennis player Izumi as we see some jealousy. In this episode, Izumi challenges Yo to a tennis match since Izumi is doubtful of Yo's athletic ability. It means a lot for Izumi, the star tennis player, to challenge Yo the baseball star, to a game of tennis, Azumi's main sport. Clearly, Azumi loves playing on fair fields. But against all odds, somehow Yo shows Azumi her strength, and uh, no, Yo loses. But the baseball coach notes that that was really unfair, so he challenges Azumi to hit one of Yo's fastballs within three strikes, with tennis balls for pitching since that was what was around, so I guess this could still be classified as the tennis portion of the episode. After a few of Yo's pitches, against all odds, somehow Izumi shows Yo her strength. And no, she loses. Wait, wait, no, 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 wait, she actually hits the ball and wins. Luckily, the coach ruins the victory by pointing out that the tennis ball travels a lot further than a baseball since it is hollow and made of a different material. He's doing my job for me. At least someone here understood how these challenges are incredibly uneven more than the main characters seem to. And then Yo and Izumi went on to become best friends. Except not really. Sort of. Not even a little bit. Number six is Pokemon, Diamond and Pearl. Now everyone knows this show starring the eternal 12 year old Ash Ketchum. He's 10. No, you're 10! I am not. But in one of these episodes, Ash and his friends find themselves at a Pokemon ping pong tournament. Being the sole ping pong episode on this list, it had to do something interesting for a one-off, and it did. This was a doubles ping pong tournament with Trainer and Pokemon. The trainer uses a ping pong paddle as you'd expect, but their Pokemon partner is prohibited from using one. Instead, the Pokemon has to use some part of its body or an item it normally carries, like Tails, the League of Farfetched, and my favorite, Alakazam's Spoons. <gasps> Magical. That being said, why do these background trainers have these types of Pokemon with them? Throwing a shuckle into a ping pong match is just cruel. The other catch to this tournament is the Pokemon ping pong champion is participating with his shift tree. This guy's name is O, just O, no other parts to his name. He can stop a flaming ping pong ball with his hands, so I guess he doesn't need any last name, or first name for that matter. Dawn eventually advances to a point where she can play against this mighty O. Now this is a really intense match of table tennis. Halfway through the second round, Dawn's paddle breaks from the sheer force of O's blow. And, instead of replacing the paddle, Ambifon takes over using his dual hand tails to knock it back. Now, I just want to point something out about this tournament. For it being a ping pong tournament, they seem to have a serious shortage of paddles for the game. Like seriously, half the contestants are given paddles, and everyone else is told to just use their hands, and one breaks and they can't bring a paddle back mid-round, or not even between two matches? God. <gasps> what happens next, Mr. Top Ten List? They just give her a new paddle. Oh. Clearly though, Ambipom was tired out from having to play for the both of them and eventually needs to be taken to the Pokemon Center. This episode had more over-the-top anime tropes than Pokemon normally does. Ping pong balls lighting on fire from sheer force, weapons sort of breaking in the heat of battle, and that one type of perspective shot where the opponent is like 20 feet taller than the protagonist to show how daunting of a challenge he or she is facing. <laughs> 
<laughs> Daunting. I didn't mean for that to happen. And what about the spoons? How did the spoons win? Oh, and you know those cliche Pokemon episodes where they give away a Pokemon they had a heartfelt relationship with at the end of an episode? Yeah, that happens here. Dawn gives away Ambipom so Ambipom can go become a ping pong star with O. So much for a show about friendship. Oops, someone else wants you. Goodbye, friend. Although this episode was bumped down a few notches on this list because it made us exploit the tennis ping pong loophole, looking back it was pretty epic. Maybe we should bump it up a bit. We couldn't do that. It's too sad when she gave him away. Number 5. Yu Yu Hakusho Episode 81 This episode occurred in the middle of a whole saga, so it's kind of hard to explain everything that's going on. In this episode, Yusuke and part of his alliance are fighting against this kid known as the Game Master, who can make his favorite video game Goblin City come into real life and force the characters to participate in the challenges of the game. One of the games within the games is a sports game, which can be really any sport and of course in this episode it's Virtual Tennis. Of course, Virtual Tennis is kinda weird when you're playing as a real life virtual version of yourself. Mitarai basically has to play tennis through the video game as himself playing real tennis. I guess that means if you know how to play the video game, you automatically know how to play the sports? Well, that's really lucky for him. For a second, I thought it was gonna be like when someone who actually plays guitar picks up a Guitar Hero controller and is just like, what do I do with this? What are these buttons? Where are my strings? Basically, we can say this one game of tennis can decide the fate of the world. Just a standard game, except the villain is the referee and he's constantly reminding you of your tortured past. God, why do villains have to be so evil? Number 4 is the tennis episode from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. This is the second generation of Yu-Gi-Oh! where we follow Jade and Yuki, dub name, at the Duel Academy, which gives teens an education on how to play everyone's favorite card game, Duel Monsters, or Yu-Gi-Oh! if you live in this reality. From the looks of it, this school has more of a curriculum than just here's the right way to play card games, since we see physical education being studied with tennis in gym class. It clearly was not being played for interest in the sport, since Jaden made it clear he hates playing tennis. Oh boy, wait until you hear what he's in store for. Jump ahead and Jaden is being punished by having to play tennis with the pretty boy tennis captain that has a crush on Jaden's friend and sort of but not really love interest, Alexis Rhodes, dub name. Tennis captain drops his duties of playing tennis with Jaden to challenge him to a duel, with the winner getting Alexis as his fiance, despite the fact Alexis never agreed to this and it kind of came out of nowhere. The plot and motivation here are kind of arbitrary. And can you guess what incredibly surprising deck theme the tennis captain has? Sports. More specifically? Ball sports. Tennis. Tennis. It's tennis, people. Exactly. Tennis cards that never existed in the real card game, but it's okay because this episode exists for the sake of filler and gets us nowhere. It's what we expected. Jaden wins, Tennis Guy never shows up again, and Alexis never cared about Tennis Guy's feelings to begin with. So the duel was pointless, but the entire episode focused on tennis, which is why it gets a high spot despite that one episode love triangle. It's like Three's Company all over again. Except, I don't think that's how Three's Company went down. Number 3, Sailor Moon Episode 14. This is just an early first season filler episode where the plot is self-contained, the stakes are low, and the monster of the week is silly. The fate of the world may have depended on how Sailor Moon could defeat this tennis-based enemy, but since it was obvious filler from the start, we knew they had to establish the status quo by the end of the episode. What this episode lacks in organized tennis matches, it makes up for by constantly reminding us that this week we're talking about tennis. Since it's just a throwaway filler episode, we're introduced to a conflict setup character we never see again. Rui, the childhood friend of Usagi's friend Naru. I'm glad Naru was such great friends with Rui considering Rui is never mentioned by her for the rest of the series. Rui is a star tennis player, so when one of the generals of the Dark Kingdom Nephrite, aka Masato Sanjuin, aka Maxfield Stanton, implants her tennis racket with a demon, it briefly makes Rui evil, feeds off her energy, and eventually is born. 
Then it's your standard Sailor Moon filler episode where she fights the monster of the day with moves we've seen before. However, if there's any highlight, it's the fact that Sailor Moon is encased in a giant tennis ball by this demon. She looks like she's wearing a Halloween costume. It's pretty cute. I'd give it a... 7. Yeah, a 7. How did they get her out of the giant... being a giant tennis ball? Um, well, she, she never does. She's forced to live the rest of her life as a large tennis ball. <laughs> that would be a dark ending to the Sailor Moon series. No, it just kind of wears off when the demon is hit by one of Tuxedo Mask's roses. It's pretty anticlimactic. The powers absorbed from Naru's friend, whose only trait is being good at tennis, translate quite literally. You know, a lot of these powers are pretty cool for a throwaway villain. Flaming tennis balls and trapping people in tennis balls. I like it. Oh yeah, Sailor Mercury and Mars show up right at the end, right when the fight ends. Since I guess the writers had no place to put them in this episode, but they wanted to remind us that they could have been there. And they couldn't have stopped the back room. Number two is the tennis episode from Kill la Kill. Now, this is a anime about a girl with magic clothes trying to get revenge for her dead father. To do this, she has to go to a school and defeat all the club presidents to get to the president of the school. During her journey of fighting all these club presidents who also have magic clothes, she has to fight the president of the tennis club. This episode is awesome. It definitely sets the stage for the series you're about to enter. There was plenty of setup for the overarching series plot in this episode since it was only episode 2, so it's not 100% over the top tennis sequences that show us the dangers of rubber balls. However, this episode makes up for every minute you did not see anything related to tennis by shoving tennis down your throat when it was relevant to the plot. That's why this episode did not need 20 minutes of pure anime tennis action like some other episodes it beat out. Earlier choices on this list may have had highlights of flaming tennis balls or incredibly convenient card rules that just so happen to relate to actual tennis matches. But the quality of tennis themes in this Kill la Kill episode outweigh the quantity seen in other episodes on this list. The tennis match in the episode was only a consequence of the fact Ryoko challenged the tennis club leader to a fight on a tennis court. So using her normal brute force strategy with her scissor blade would result in a loss and you have to follow those rules in Honoji Academy. The scissor blade being used as a legitimate tennis racket was a highlight, but the design of the villain, the pre-match fights, along with Mako getting pelted by tennis balls many many times, may just ultimately overtake my interest over the actual match. Do you know how many tennis balls hit her face? Oh my god, it was like bee stings blistering her face, her skin. You know the laws of physics don't affect Mako. That's the kind of clothes I want. Make me an expert at tennis in 30 seconds flat. I love it. I'm not quite sure you have the right figure for Ryuko's Kamui. I mean, it might be a little snug, but I think I can pull it off. For number one, it was basically neck and neck between this choice and number two. Number one squeaked out its victory using our complicated off-screen algorithm. While it may have only been an 11 minute episode, it managed to parody a tennis anime for this episode along with other sports tropes in anime, and provide an epic tennis match to boot. All in just these 11 minutes. Number one, Binbo Gamiga or Good Luck Girl, Episode 9, Part 1. Here we have a comedy anime that briefly parodies numerous other animes in each episode, along with following its own plot. The series involves the main character Ichiko trying to outsmart the poverty god Momiji, who is trying to take away Ichiko's happiness energy to restore the balance and the happiness in her city because Ichiko is a spoiled girl who unknowingly sucks all the happiness energy from around her. Ooh, that's a lot of exposition. In this half episode, Ichiko and Momiji have to battle against each other with what exactly? I'm pretty sure you can guess it. Is it, is it swimming? You know very well what it is. This episode takes a turn for the epic and comedic as expected with the series, but the comedy also lies in the build-up where the two girls have to find doubles partners. However, the rivalry between the characters that partner up with the two main characters makes it feel like these characters are walking in from a different anime plotline that started off screen. 
There are lots of great gags, like the long-haired blonde guy Shino being directly acknowledged as a Prince of Tennis parody, or Ichiko walking away in the middle of Shino's cliched exposition monologue, and other gags I will not spoil. Even without Shino and his rival acting as the comedic straight men, the whole tennis match is a sight to behold that I cannot truly explain. I do like that the rules get obliterated midway through the match, when both main characters cheat. Ichiko eventually gets a new racket, and by new racket I mean she ties her supernatural weapon to the end of a completely normal racket, seems like a legal move, in reaction to Momiji breaking physics and referencing One Piece. Overall, this episode parodies the one-off sports-themed anime episodes that this list is basically targeting, while still doing its own thing with the idea, so it's a fitting number one. I do feel bad for the guys that get overpowered because they are simply too normal of characters. So the guys don't really matter in this tennis scene because it's all about the women. It's all about the ladies. Well, yeah, that's because they're the main characters. So anyway, what do you think? Agree? Disagree? Are there any tennis-themed episodes of anime that we did not include? Did any of these anime look interesting to you if you've never heard of them? Let us know, or hey, just leave a comment on the video because we know this is a very specific topic. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and we will see you all next time. Thanks for dropping by!